This instructional video is designed to show you how to apply nuclear stability tests. We have the 83 test, the ratio test, and the even odd test. And we have a list of five nuclei. So the first thing to do in order to do any of these is to actually determine the number of neutrons and protons. So for the vanadium-52, we can get the number of protons from its atomic number, which is 23. And 23 plus the number of neutrons will give us 52, so we have 29 neutrons. The first test is the 83 test. It's straightforward. Uh, we check to see if the number of protons is greater than 83. It's not, so this is a pass. Next, we do the ratio test. The number of protons needs to be less than the number of neutrons. Uh, in other words, we look at the ratio of neutrons to protons. The 29 divided by 23 is greater than 1. So again, this passes. And finally, we have the even-odd test. Uh, this checks to see if the number of neutrons is odd. With few exceptions, this indicates uh, instability. Because 29 is an odd number, for the even-odd test, this is a fail. And so we'll be able to use these same tests for the remaining nuclei. And I simply have to get the number of neutrons and protons. Thorium is atomic number 90. This means that we have 143 neutrons. For magnesium, the atomic number is 12. And this means that we have 15 neutrons. For antimony, the atomic number is 51. This means that we have 60 neutrons. And for boron, the atomic number is 5. So we have 7 neutrons. And so now we can step through each one of these tests for all of these, given that we have the number of neutrons and number of protons. So, the 83 test, 90 is larger than 83, so this is a fail. For the ratio test, 143 divided by 90 is bigger than 1, so this is a pass. On the even odd test, 143 is an odd number, so this is a fail. Now, for magnesium, the number of protons is clearly less than 83, so this is a pass. For the ratio test, we have 15 divided by 12. That is greater than 1. However, because magnesium is atomic number 20 or less, there is an addendum to the rule that you can only have 0, 1, or 2 more, proton, uh, two more neutrons and protons. Here, number of neutrons minus number of protons is 3. So that's too many neutrons. So this is a fail on the ratio test because of the 20 uh, protons or less addendum. And finally, for the even-odd test, 15 is odd. So that's also a fail. For antimony, the number of protons is clearly less than 83. So that's a pass. 60 divided by 51 is larger than 1, so that is also a pass. And for the even-odd test, 60 is an even number, so this passes on all three and is anticipated to be stable. Finally, uh, 5 protons is less than 83, so this passes the 83 test. Uh, for the ratio test, 7 divided by 5 is greater than 1. And on the addendum, for atomic numbers of 20 or less, we find that 7 is only 2 more protons than 5. So this passes on all counts for the ratio test. And finally, on the even-odd test, uh, boron 12 has 7 protons. And that is a fail. 
So by being able to look at an isotope symbol and determine the number of neutrons and protons, it is possible to apply the 83 test, the ratio test, and the even-odd test in determining the likelihood of nuclear stability.